Hey yo what's up guys and welcome to my new video. In this video I want to show you the quality of Chinese replacement LCD and touch screens and I also want to show you what you have to do if your LCD backlight is not working after the reassembly or if you just have um, general problems with your LCD backlight like a flickering screen or your screen works in other devices but you're not in your device. So this must be a problem on your mainboard. And as you can see here, I purchased the LCD and touchscreen unit for the HTC One X and this is directly from China. On the package it just says LCD and touchscreen unit, mobile phone accessories and that it ensures best quality like the original. We will now see if that is true. First I want to show you a little test of the replacement screen. As you can see here is the screen connector and all I have to do now is just attach the display to the mainboard and then I can power it on and see if the display is working. So let's try this. Here's the connector and here comes the connector cable from the LCD display. So it's here, here we go and this just fits in into this connector here. So let's try this. So this is a little bit tricky sometimes. First you have to open up this little bar, just push it up. Then you have to push the connector in and make sure that it's 100% in. If it's not 100% in, it's, if it's just the slightest way out, your display won't go on. So let's try this. You can use the pry tool you get with the display to slide it in. So here we go. So just take yourself time, make it slowly, try not to damage the connector or the flex cable and make sure that this cable is 100% in the connector. You can also use the pry tool to slide the cable into the connector as you can see here. Just make sure that it's on both sides in. And after it is 100% in on both sides, you just have to close this little white bar. You can also use the pry tool to close it. Just um, pull it down. Okay, once again. And now it's closed and the connector is in. And now we can power up the whole system and see if the LCD is working. The touchscreen will not work because the touchscreen cable is not connected to this device here. Okay, so the charger is connected to the mainboard, also the LCD unit is connected to the mainboard and the red LED on the top indicates that the battery is charging. Now we can try to um, power the whole system up, so here we go. Okay, um, let's try this again because this button is a little bit tricky. So once again. And as you can see it's powering up. The screen looks really good, really bright, you can see the HTC boot screen and also the resolutions um, looks like the original one, so I can't really see a difference to the um, original screen. And this screen did only cost $40, which is really nothing because the original screen costs even more than $130. And now let's wait until it boots into Android. But the colors here on this screen are really looking good, also the resolution looks really good. So I think this is not a real cheap screen like on some other Chinese smartphones. And here we are in Android and also the colors are looking really good and um, the resolution is looks really like the original screen. Okay, but after I've reassembled the whole device, something strange happened. The LCD backlight just stopped working and it did not show up anything. Then I googled this issue and I think I found a solution for this which I want to share with you guys. So I found out that there are three types of flex cables. The first one is the yellow flex, also called AU. The second one is the green flex, also called sharp. And the third one is the green plus yellow flex, which is the Sony flex. And those three flex cables are not 100% compatible under each other. So if you also have like me the green plus yellow flex, which is the Sony flex, and then you get the yellow flex, which is the AU flex, and you try to place it, it will um, damage your um, LCD backlight. Maybe it does not damage your LCD backlight, but you could have serious problems. So please make sure that you purchase the um, correct flex cable for your device. So first make sure which one you have, if you have the yellow flex, the green flex, or if you have the Sony flex, because this will make a huge difference. Okay, now I want to show you how to fix the LCD backlight problem after you have purchased the wrong unit or it just went off. So here on the left side you can see a HTC One X mainboard and here you can see three main components which are responsible for the LCD backlight. The first one is this um, 220 thing here, it's a coil. The second one is another coil and the third one is a IC which um, regulates your LCD backlight. 
And the first thing you should definitely do is changing the 220 coil. If that does not work, you should change the other coil, and if that also does not work, you have to replace the IC. But in 90% of the cases, you have just burned your 220 coil. And you can find those 220 coils also in other phones. Like here on the right top corner, you can see an old Nokia phone. And this old Nokia phone contains one 220 coil. And on the right bottom corner, you can see one old Sony Ericsson phone, which contains two 220 coils. And all you have to do now is just um, soldier out the burnt coil of your mainboard and then soldier out the coil of a old um, phone and then just um, re-soldier the, the coil from the old phone into the mainboard of your new phone and then the backlight should work again. And if you don't have an old phone which contains 220 coils you can also purchase them on eBay, AliExpress or anywhere from China but you will have to wait uh, um, about two or three weeks to get them. But only do this if you're 100% sure that not your display or the flex cable is broken or even the connector on your mainboard. So if the connector on your mainboard is faulty, this also could be the reason that your backlight is not working. Okay, so when you have checked this and you got a 220 coil, then you're good to go and now I'll show you how to replace this. Okay, so now let's start with the replacing process. But first I will just show you where you can find this coil on your mainboard. So here I have the old um, Sony Ericsson phone where I took off the replacement coil. Here you can see the um, replacement screen, which is the um, screen from China. And as I said before, I just have got the wrong screen with the wrong flex cable. So I've got the green flex cable, which is the sharp one. And I had just the Sony one and maybe this shortened out my um, 220 coil. And now I will show you where you can find the 220 coil on your um, mainboard. So let's take a closer look at it. Okay, so here's the mainboard. And here you can find um, the um, 220 coil. It's just this little thing here which is, um, which is left to this IC here. And this IC is just left to the other coil. And now we'll take another closer look at it. Because you should also make sure that you re it in the correct direction and don't um, just research it in the other direction. And now I want to show you a little way to test your coil. All you need to have is just a multimeter and set it to below 10 ohms. Then you just uh, measure at both ends of the coil and see um, how much the resistance is. If the resistance of this um, coil is below 1.3 ohms, it's mostly shortened. So as you can see, this coil had about 0 0.6 ohms. And now let's measure the resistance of the working coil, which is from this old Sony Ericsson phone. So um, the resistance value of this working coil should be something between 1.3 um, and 1.6 ohms. So here we get um, 1.6, 1.7. So as you can see, this coil um, will work. And now at the next step, I want to show you which equipment and skills you should have to replace such a coil. You should have at least some basic soldiering skills and a good soldiering station which has at least 30 watts and a temperature up to 550 degrees. Then you also should have a pair of tweezers to get out um, this little coil. Then you also should have a good soldiering tip which should have at least 0.3 millimeters. Um, it should not be too small because then you can't get all the heat onto the coil. Then you also should have some good solder, um, a 0.5mm solder is good for SMD. Then it's also good to have some solder wick to get out some excessive solder. And then you also should have some flux, I will be using this soldering honey. It is, it is called honey because it has the same consistency like honey, but you can use any flux you can get. And now I'll show you how this looks like. I will not soldier this in front of the camera because it's not my phone and this is a little bit risky. But um, here you can see um, how it looks like when the coil is removed. You can see just two pins, the left and the right one. And now you just have to re-soldier the coil in the correct direction as I said before. And now I'll show you how it looks like after you have re-soldiered the coil. So here we go. Now here you can see the re-soldiered coil. I know I'm not that good at soldiering, so it's a little bit, I don't know, dirty, but it's just okay, it's, it's in place, it has contact, and now we will see if it worked. So here we can see the LCD display, and I built it back together, and now let's power it on. 
Okay, and as you can see, it's just working fine. The display is looking really good for this Chinese display. The backlight is working without any problems. It's not flickering. The buttons are working. The touch screen is working. And this is really nice. So just this little coil, which is only worth a few cents, fucked up the whole $300 phone. Isn't that awesome? If you just replace this little thing, your phone is back working. So I'm now at the end of this video, I hope it was helpful and if you have any questions just feel free to ask and if it was helpful just like it and subscribe. And thanks for watching and as always fuck you HTC. Bye.